Hey guys, Mr. McKinney here, just doing part two of the Unit 6 review video. Um, we finished up, or we finished the other video with U substitution. Here's a bunch more practice problems for U substitution. So hit pause if you want to work them out. Um, the first step here is going to show how to set, how to pick U for each of these problems. And then on this last slide, you'll see the answers for each of them. Email your teacher if you have questions on any of these. We did all these in class, in my class at least. All right, next piece is the fundamental theorem of calculus, which has two parts. There's the anti-differentiation piece and the evaluation piece. The anti-differentiation piece basically just says that the derivative of the integral is whatever is inside the integral. So derivatives and integrals undo each other. A couple of things you got to keep in mind. The variable on the bottom here that you're taking the derivative with respect to needs to match the variable at the upper limit. The lower limit needs to be a constant. And whatever this variable is needs to match this variable. As long as all that is true, all you got to do is plug in the variable on the top into the function. So let's take a look at an example. So find capital F prime of X if capital F is equal to this integral. So capital F prime would mean that we're taking the derivative with respect to X of this integral. And as long as everything matches up, we've got the variable matching here, constant on the bottom. All you have to do is plug in the variable on the top into the function. So this would equal x cubed minus 4x. So the derivative and the integral cancel each other out. Just plug in the variable on the top if you're taking the derivative here. You also have to keep in mind the chain rule on this type of problem. So if you have a function on the upper limit, Plug the function into the variable, and then just make sure you multiply by the derivative of that function on top. So for example, here, if I want to find y prime, I would take the derivative of y. So y prime, which is the same as dy dx, would be the derivative with respect to x of this integral. Constant this variable matches, so I can just plug in 2x, so it'd be 3 times 2x plus 1, but now I have to multiply this whole thing times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. Then you can stop right here, put a box around it, don't go any further. And then the last example gets a little bit more difficult where you'd have to apply the additivity property of integrals and break this one up. So if you have a variable on the bottom and a variable on the top, you'd have to split it up. So you would first say that this is the same as the derivative of the integral from x to, you can use whatever constant you want. I would just pick zero of five ln of t dt plus the derivative of the integral from zero to x cubed of 5 ln of t dt. Each of these requires a little bit of extra work. On the second one, you can plug in x cubed, but then you need to remember to multiply by that derivative, so times 3x squared, once you plug in x cubed. On the first one, we need the constant to be on the bottom. So if I want to flip these, you're going to make it negative, and then you can flip the limits, so it'd be 0 to x. And again, I've got this all worked out on the next slide. All right. You're, in a regular year, you would almost be guaranteed to see this type of problem, either on the multiple choice or free response or both. This year, we really just don't know exactly what they're going to put on it. But there's a good chance you'll see some sort of graph and be asked to, be, uh, to analyze it um, and you're probably going to be given some sort of relationship where g is the integral of f or g prime is f, something along those lines. So the first thing you're going to want to do on this problem is figure out what is the relationship between 
G and F and G prime and F prime and all those different things. So if I take the derivative on the left side, it's going to go from G to G prime to G double prime. If I take the derivative on the right side, derivative and integral are going to cancel out. So I get F of X and then F prime of X. You, the first thing you should do is figure out this relationship. If G is the integral from a constant to X of F of T dt, then G prime is F of X and G double prime is F prime. Which means that G of X, since it's the integral of F, if we have a graph of F, it'd be the area under the curve between zero and whatever X is. G prime of X would be the point on this curve because G prime is just F. And then G double prime would be F prime, which would be the slope of that curve. So if I want to find G of negative one, that's an integral. G prime of negative one is just a point, And then G double prime is a slope. So I have that worked out here. For what values of X on the interval is G increasing? So G would be increasing. G is increasing when g prime is positive and g prime is just f so i want to know when f is positive so when this graph is above the y or sorry the x-axis so between negative one and one all right if i want to know when g is concave up then i'm asking okay g is concave up when the second derivative is positive. And if G is the integral, then G prime is F and G double prime is F prime. So G double prime is greater than zero. When F prime is greater than zero, F prime means the slope of the tangent of F. So when is the slope of f or the slope of the tangent line positive so this slope is positive so between negative two and zero if i wanted to sketch a graph you can either think about what's the integral of two linear functions so you're going to get two half parabolas or i think it's easier to just plug in different points and figure out what the area would be underneath them um, so for example, G of negative two. So the point G, the point on G when X is negative two would be the area from zero to negative two. So the area from zero to negative two, this area and this area would cancel each other out. So we get zero. The integral from zero to negative one is above the axis, but we're going backwards, which is why you get a negative value. Email me if you have questions on that at all. The other piece of the fundamental theorem of calculus is the evaluation piece, which basically connects indefinite and definite integrals. So if I want to know the value of a definite integral, then I can use the indefinite integral and plug in the upper and lower limits and just subtract them. So for example, if I wanted to know the integral of x cubed plus 1 going from 1 to 3, so if I think about the graph, x cubed plus 1, pretend like that went through that point, from 1 to 3. I can't find the area using rectangles. I could get really close, but this isn't a semicircle. It's not a perfect shape that we know, a geometric shape that we know the area of. So I can just take the integral of each piece. So the integral of x cubed is going to go to x to the fourth over 4. The integral of 1 is x. I'm not going to write the integral symbol anymore because now I'm just evaluating the upper and lower limits. So I'm going to plug in 3 first. So 3 to the fourth over 4 plus 3 minus, and then I'm going to plug in 1. 1 to the fourth over 4 plus 1. And then you can stop there. I've simplified it on this next slide. If you have to do a definite integral and you're going to need to use u substitution, you want to make sure you plug in the limits at the start of the problem. 
So for example, on this, I would make my u be x to the fourth plus nine, which would mean the derivative of that would be four x cubed dx. So I've got an x cubed dx, I would need a four, which would mean I would need a one fourth out front. And before I do anything else, I'm gonna convert this whole problem into u. So I need to convert the limits into u as well. So u of zero, plug in zero, and it would give me nine. U of one, plug in one, and that would give me 10. So I'm gonna rewrite this entire problem, not with X's anymore, but with U's. So one fourth integral, not zero to one, but nine to 10. I have DU, and then this is just the square root of U on the bottom of a fraction would be u to the negative one half. So now I can actually take the integral because it matches my power formula now. So one to the fourth, u add one to the exponent becomes positive one half, divide by one half, and now I'm gonna plug in 10, and then plug in nine and subtract. So one fourth divided by a half would be the same as one fourth times two, which is a half u to the one half is the square root of u. So just plug it in the upper and lower limits. So we'd have one half root 10 minus one half root nine. Now, while the square root of nine is three, you don't have to simplify that. Here it is all worked out and it'll be worked out on the slides online as well. All right, hope this video was helpful. I know we covered a lot in this unit. So email if you have questions. Thanks and good luck. Only a couple weeks left until the AP exam. Hope you're taking your prep seriously.